Okay, we're talking about the Tyndale effect. Why shouldn't you use your high beams in fog? Now that we've just finished driver's ed, we know we don't want to use our high beams in fog is because it creates a glare. So fog is actually a colloid or collodial mixture. And what that means is that those medium particles are suspended in the air. And when you do your high beams, it's going to hit those particles of water that are suspended, and it's going to scatter it back at you. That's why if you have fog lights, they're considered low beams, and they hit lower from it, and you can see that you have a clearer picture compared to our high beams on the top part. So what the Tyndale effect is, is that it's a scattering of the light particles from that colloid, or they can even say a suspension for it if the particles were suspended, which causes the beam of light to be visible. So if we take a look in this example, we just have water, and then we have milk and water in this one. And we can see it in the drawing too above. So if we have water, notice that you cannot see the beam in it because it's not hitting any of those particles within it. So we have our salt water solution, no beam. But when it hits those medium-sized particles, we'll see that there's now a beam of light there. And it's scattering throughout, and we can see that it illuminates the rest of the solution. The same idea with fog um, and using your high beams versus using a low beam for it. So that's the Tyndale effect. Thanks for watching.